ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy, and today we're doing Tech Showdown's top GPUs of 2017. So before we get into that, I just want to tell you guys, if you want to win this super expensive gaming mouse, the Swift Point Z, uh, which is a very good gaming mouse, very complicated, but very, very high end, uh, I'll be drawing that giveaway very soon. All you need to do is follow me on Twitter. I'll leave the uh, link in the description down below. So I thought for this video, what I would do would be to break it up into the different uh, main resolutions, and then I threw a fun one in at the end. So uh, 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. And let's start off with 1080p then. And this one is probably the most difficult. <laughs> So I'm talking about 1080p here, uh, 60 hertz and the high refresh rate guys, 120 hertz, 144 hertz. Because what I see a lot of you guys doing uh, is you may have a 1080p 60 hertz monitor, and then you might upgrade to like say 1080p uh, 120 hertz, 144 hertz monitor because it's not that much of a leap. You know, it doesn't cost you that much. So with that in mind, which GPUs do I pick? And I'm going to go over the models as well. And this one is so difficult because you have two really good choices. You have the AMD, uh, the RX 580, as you guys know very well. And of course you have the GTX 1060, the six gigabyte one. And I'm all talking about the eight gigabyte RX 580. So why should you go for either? Well, with the RX 580, you get generally uh, better uh, DX12 performance. Of course you get better Vulkan performance, which is always nice. Get a bit more memory there, you get 8 gigs rather than the 6 on the uh, 1060, although that probably doesn't matter at 1080p. And you also get FreeSync support, which is the big one, because FreeSync monitors are a lot cheaper than G-Sync ones. So it can get you in on that uh, quite a bit more easily. Now the 1060 still has a lot of good factors for it as well. Lower power consumption being a very prevalent one. Also the fact that it has generally better DX11 performance. And you get a GeForce experience, and by extension, Shadow Play, which is something that a lot of you guys uh, like to use, and it is good. So, with that in mind, uh, which ones do I pick? So, personally, if it was me going out spending my own money, I would pick the RX 580. Now, keep in mind that these uh, GPUs are very, very close in price. And as far as models go, I'd probably pick the MSI. Uh, depending on where you live, the Strix can also be a good one. The Strix RX 580, uh, it just depends on the pricing. With the uh, GTX 1060, I would go for the G1 Gaming. It just has the two fans on it, but that still did a very solid job there. Uh, quite big heat sinks on it. So that's a very good one in terms of the 1060. But yeah, personally, I would go for the RX uh, 580 because uh, personally, I'm not, you know, I don't really worry that much when it comes to power consumption and things like that. But other people, you know, uh, people I respect and people who have very good opinions on tech, like Brian uh, from Tech City, Tech Guest City, uh, he prefers the GTX 1060. Either way, you're going to get a very good GPU. You just have to keep those things in mind, you know, which, uh, where do you prioritize things? And also, if there's a specific game you're wanting to play, then look at the benchmarks for that specific game. And if there's a big variance there, then that might, ha might help you make your decision. So let's move on to 1440p, which is a little bit easier, but not by much. So at 1440p, 60 hertz, and also talking about the high refresh rate monitors as well, uh, you have two main choices now, recently. Um, before, I would say you could just go with the GTX 107, one like this guy right here, G1 Gaming, uh, GTX 107, very solid 1440p GPU. But since NVIDIA released the 1070 Ti, and of course AMD has the Vega 56, uh, it's you, you probably want to trend more towards those two. So once again, why would you go for something like the Vega 56? Well, you get HBM2, which is much more advanced memory than the GDDR5 you get on a 1070 or 1070 Ti. Not only that, once again, you get better DX12 and Vulkan performance, and you get the FreeSync uh, compatibility which is big although at this price point and at with these monitors the 1440p one it becomes less of an issue but it's still a factor that needs to be considered uh, the 1070 or 1070 ti once again lower power consumption than the vega 56 that's for sure 
Uh, generally, once again, better DX11 performance. And as of right now, you have lots of models to pick from. There's tons of 1070 models and 1070 Ti models. Whereas the Vega 56, you only, you're stuck with these reference ones for right now, which is uh, a bit of a letdown. Really, there should have been non-reference ones by now. I know they're going to be coming out soon, but yeah, the reference model card isn't that good. Uh, you definitely want to wait for the non-reference ones to be coming out. So what would I pick then? Well, given the state of the market right now, I would go with probably a 1070 Ti if I could get one. It just depends on the pricing where you live. If I could get one that's only maybe a little bit more expensive than, you know, $30, $40 more expensive than a 1070, uh, then I would go for that. Uh, any of the good models of 1070 should be fine. Your, your Gaming X, the Strix, the G1 Gaming, they're all great, uh, very solid. Just, just look for a nice... Uh, cheap one that's coming in at a good price point out of those main brands. They're all pretty good So, you know, it's not a particularly hot running chip either So that's what I would say but with that in mind in the future when there's non-reference uh, Vega 56s then I would maybe trend towards that I'll have to see once I start testing them myself uh, myself uh, along with Teddy <laughs> but yeah, the uh, We'll see how they go then but the Vega 56 to me, uh, with the memory in that, it just seems like you're getting more for your money, so to speak. I know Nvidia spent a fortune on Pascal in terms of R&D, but you know what I'm saying with the HBM2. So that's what I would say right now. But once again, it's very difficult. Once the non-reference Vega 56 has come out, uh, that's going to be a very hard decision to pick, like a 1070 Ti or a uh, non-reference Vega 56. We'll, have to, we'll also have to see what pricing it comes in at. Now let's move up to 4K. And for this, it's really easy. GTX 1080 Ti. What other choice do you have? The Vega 64 is not a good deal. Just stay away from that. Vega 56 is, but the 64 isn't. Um, and the gap between the GTX 1080 and 1080 Ti is actually quite large. It's like a 30 to 35% performance gap. So you pretty much have to, if you're doing single card, remember, you pretty much have to go up to the GTX 1080 Ti. Now with that in mind, which model do I pick? So I watched uh, Gamers Nexus, uh, Steve over there, he did his, you know, top picks as far as GPUs go. And when he came to, uh, you know, the 1080 Ti's, I think he did a separate video on that, picking their top model. Uh, he said that they picked the ASUS Strix. And then, in a close second place, they picked the Gaming X. Now you guys that watch all my videos will know that you would have seen that I was running the Strix GTX 1080 Ti for a while and then I switched over to the MSI Gaming X GTX 1080 Ti. This one right here is my personal GPU. So I ran both of them back to back because I, I was trying to pick out of the two. I really liked both of them um, and personally I would pick the Gaming X but it's really close. Either of those two models are going to be fantastic. They're great in terms of, you know, temps and noise and everything, and they're just a fantastic GPU. The GTX 1080 Ti is extremely powerful, so if you're going for 4K, uh, I would pick out of those two models if you can. Just look at pricing, basically pick whichever one's cheaper, uh, depending on where you live, and you're going to get a great graphics card for 4K gaming. It's going to do you just fine. And the final one I want to talk about is the most confusing GPU, and this one is the Titan XP. So, it's confusing just mainly for the name. If you don't understand, so the, there was the Titan X, and then NVIDIA brought out another Titan X, but this one was Pascal based. So we all called it the Titan XP, that gave it that nickname. You know, Titan X and P for Pascal. Nice and easy, right? Then NVIDIA, in all their wisdom, decided to release another one called the Titan XP. But this time it was a lowercase p. So that confused a lot of us out here. We were like, well, we were already gave the old one that nickname. Now you've actually called it the Titan XP officially. So then everyone would have to say, oh, it's the Titan XP, oh, the, the little p. But it's just like, why does it need to come to this point? Uh, you know, NVIDIA, you could have called it anything. Call it the Titan Triple X. You know, that sounds awesome. Um, because, you know, because it's the third time next. You could do that. It just, it boggles my mind. Also, the placement of this GPU now, given where the GTX 1080 Ti comes in, is also a bit suspect. But yeah, it's just, 
Oh, come on, guys. That was so confusing. There was no need for it. It could have easily been avoided. Uh, and that's my most confusing GPU this year, I would say, just because of the naming confused everybody so much. <laughs> so that's going to round out this video, guys. But I want to know what you guys think. Do you agree with all the uh, recommendations I made in this video? Do you disagree? Which GPUs would you pick for each of these categories? I know I didn't go too far down in the entry level stuff and I started quite high with sort of like mid-range uh, uh, GPUs, but I feel like they really come in at a very solid uh, price point and sort of like value for money and most of you guys are gaming at 1080p and those are the ones I would recommend to get really good value out of your graphics card. But let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Now I thank you all for watching this video. Please subscribe to Tech Showdown if you haven't already and like the video. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.